Hey, good optometry morning. Today I am summarizing what is reportedly the most read article in the British Journal of Ophthalmology. And it's talking about the effectiveness of Hoya's Myosmart spectacle lenses for myopia management. And we are starting right now. All right, so I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, your YouTube eye doctor. And like I said, we're gonna be talking about the Hoya Myosmart spectacle lens. And there's two studies that I'm gonna be talking about today. And they were both published in the British Journal of Ophthalmology. The first one I'm gonna be talking about was published in 2020, and it summarizes the first two years of this study. And the second one I'm gonna be talking about is published in 2021, and that summarizes year three results of this study. So the first study, and I'm gonna read it because it's a little bit of a mouthful here. The first study is called Defocus Incorporated Multiple Segments Spectacle Lenses Slow Myopia Progression, a two-year randomized clinical trial. And the second study is called Myopia control effects of defocus incorporated multiple segments, spectacle lenses in Chinese children, results of a three-year follow-up study. All right, so I'm gonna put the link to both these studies in the description down below. So if you really wanna read them, you can go and take ahead and take a look at them. But seriously, we know you're watching the video because you don't wanna read them and you wanna hear the summary that I'm gonna give. So if you're happy you don't have to read them, give me some love and give me a like down below. All right, so this first study was a two-year double-masked randomized clinical trial that looked at Chinese children between the ages of 8 and 13 years old with prescriptions between minus 1 and minus 5. And so this study was conducted at the Center for Myopia Research at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Now, one thing that's good for you to know is that you, this university is the one that designed this lens, and this is also the university that conducted this study to look at the effectiveness of this lens. So this was not an independent study on this lens, but that doesn't invalidate the results because the study's design was really well done. Okay, so the spectacle lens used in the study uses the DIMS technology of myopia defocus. So I'm not gonna explain what DIMS is in this video. I've got another video on that. And so if you watch to the end, I'll tell you how you can get access to that video. So in the study, they had two groups of kids. One group of kids were traditional single vision spectacle lenses. And the second group of kids were the DIMS technology spectacle lenses. Now they monitored these kids over a two year period and they checked the vision every six months, looking at what their spectacle prescription was and also looking at the axial length of their eyeball. All right, so let's look at the results from this study. So let's first of all look at the spectacle prescription or the myopia progression. So the group in the standard lens, they changed by minus 0.85 diopters in the two years of this study. Now the DIMS group, they progressed by only minus 0.41 diopters over the two-year period. So the study reports this as a 52% reduction in the progression of the myopia. Now let's look at how much the eyeball actually grew or the axial length of the eyeball. So with this standard spectacle lens, the eyeball grew by 0.55 millimeters, while the DIMS group only grew by 0.21 millimeters. And this was reported as a 62% reduction in the growth of the eyeball. Now I'm gonna be talking a little bit later on about that percentage reduction and perhaps suggesting a little bit better way to think about how that's reduced rather than using percentages. Now the other interesting thing in this study was that there was a group of kids that had no increase in the amount of myopia and had no increase in the length of their eyeball. And so in the DIMS group, there was 21.5% of the kids that had no increase in the amount of myopia. Now this compared to the standard lens group, they had 14% of the kids had no increase in the amount of myopia. Now, if we talk about the axial length, in the DIMS group, 7.4% of the kids in the DIMS group had no increase in the growth of the eyeball. But in the group that wore a standard spectacle lens, every single one of those kids had an increased growth of their eyeball. So a couple interesting notes that they found in the studies. So one thing that they found was that the biggest effect of the DIMS technology occurred in the first six months. And the other thing that they found in the study was that there seemed to be a little bit more effectiveness of the DIMS technology in the older kids, in the kids that were 10 to 13 year olds versus the eight to 12 year olds. And so the summary of the first study showed that the DIMS technology definitely was effective in slowing the progression of myopia compared to standard single vision lenses. So study number two looked at two things. And first of all, they looked at whether that myopia progression continued to be reduced in the third year, similar to the first two years. Now the second thing they looked at, they looked at the control group that were wearing the standard spectacle lens, and they put them in the DIMS technology to see if that would help slow down the progression and the trend that they were on. 
All right, so spoiler alert, the answer to both questions is yes, but let's look at the graphs. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the myopia progression. And so what you'll see is that the blue line represents the kids that were in the DIMS technology. And so you'll see in the first 24 months, these are the same results that were published in the very first study. And again, you'll see that in increased improvement in the first six months, and then you go out to 24 months. And then if you look from 24 months to 26 months, what you're gonna see is that there's a continued trend and it looks like it's on the same slope. And so there's a continued effect of the myopia management with the DIMS technology. Now, if you look at the red line, the red line shows the control group. So the first 24 months, these kids were wearing the standard spectacle lens. And if you look at the red lines with that's dotted, what that indicates is that point, they took those kids and they switched them to the DIMS technology and they to see if that would slow the progression of the myopia. And so what this study shows is that for year three, that trend line seems to be altered and they seem to have a reduction of what the trend of what their myopia progression was. So let's look at axial length and see if they had the same effect there. So again, the blue line here indicates those kids that were in the DIMS technology and what you'll see. And in year three, it seems like it progresses in the same trend that it was in the first two years. And then again, if you look in the red line, the red line up to 24 months, these kids were not were wearing a standard spectacle lens. And then at 24 months, they put them in the DIMS technology. And again, it seemed like that there was a reduction in the amount of the increased growth of the eyeball. And so because they switched the control group kids from the standard spectacle lens into the DIMS technology lens, what that means is that year three no longer has a control group, uh, which is unfortunate because it would have been nice to see if that year three control group would have continued on the same progression that they were on or if that would have been altered anyways. And so in lieu of having a control group, what they'd used is a historical control, which basically means that they looked at the records of uh, kids that were not involved in the study and kids that had spectacle lenses and got glasses and weren't using any DIMS technology. These kids were using standard lenses. And so what they did is they matched that historical group with those other kids at, at the two-year mark, and then they watched that trend line. And so in these graphs, the green line is showing uh, what you would predict a historical trend would be for a group that wasn't corrected um, and compared to the red line which is the control group that was switched to the uh, DIMS lens and then the blue line which shows the kids that were uh, originally put in the DIMS technology. And so this was used in lieu of actually having a control group but like I said it would have been really nice if we would have had the same control group that were used in the first uh, 24 months. In this study, this showed over three years, the DIMS technology group, they had only a minus 0.52 progression of their myopia and only a 0.31 increase in the axial length. And so one thing I mentioned earlier was about how we calculate whether this is progression. So earlier I talked about the studies using a percentage value to, to talk about the reduction of the progression. But more and more, the number that we're looking at to judge whether there's a reduction in the progression is something called CARE, which stands for the Cumulative Absolute Reduction in Axial Length. And so basically what you're looking at is how much the axial length has increased over the period of the study. And so basically over the three year period, the axial length only increased by 0.31 millimeters. And so that's about 0.1 millimeters per year, which is a really great reduction in the growth of the eyeball when you consider that the con control group grew by about 0.25 millimeters every year. So that's a good target number you want to be looking at whether you're judging the progression of the myopia. Now, if you don't have a way to measure the axial length, then measuring the diopter power is a good way to do it. And so in the DIMS technology, there seemed to be about a 0.17 diopter increase per year versus the control group, which were the standard lens, they had almost a half diopter increase each year. All right, and so more great news is that this research group is going to be continuing this study looking at the DIMS technology for years four and five. And so you can look forward to those results in the coming years. All right, and so like I promised, I said that I have another video on DIMS technology and the MyoSmart lens. And if you wanna take a look at this video up here, you can learn all about the MyoSmart lens and DIMS technology. All right, and so if you like this video and you learned some new things about myopia management and you wanna get more videos on myopia management, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And with that, have a great optometry day.